The digital arts lab is far from the drawing and painting studios where Jenny Hyde began. In 1998, she earned a bachelor's in fine arts from Cornish College of the Arts in Seattle. Her exhibition was in drawing and painting. Maintaining a studio in New York City exhausted Jenny. She worked multiple jobs to support her artwork, but the fulfillment wasn't there. She was tired. Her ideas weren't working. Painting wasn't answering the questions she was asking. She had been exploring cultural geography and hu human control on physical spaces. She explains that when she says the words American West or the West, immediately there are images that come to one's mind that are sort of stereotypes of what the American West is. Stereotypes such as, um, like I always use things like cows, um, horses, um, all these things that sort of depict the American West, but in reality these things were only there because of um, a human um, habitation. Um, not just native habitation, but of course the um, uh, the, the European invasion, I would say, um, the cows, you know, w immediately wiped out all the actually indigenous uh, uh, creatures, such as the bison, and replaced them with these white-faced Hereford cows, which are from, you know, England. Um, and so that these icons were, were man-made, in a sense, and so that we actually uh, made these landscapes um, through our uh, influence and our, um, what we were doing. Influenced by recent art shows she had attended, Jenny had been experimenting with different media, drawing with Sharpies on different materials. In addition to cultural geography concepts, Jenny was trying to recall a certain physical experience or feeling of what happens to someone physically, but had difficulty putting this on canvas. A visiting friend examined her work. He told her that she should be making videos and recommended the Electronic Integrated Arts program at Alfred University where he was attending. She applied and started the program in the fall of 2004. A year after she finished graduate school, she moved back to New York. Freelancing, she created web pages and assisted another artist by transferring her slides to JPEGs until Eastern Washington University hired her as a visiting assistant professor, which led to her current tenured position. Her work has shifted to the body itself and how it shows evidence of life, thoughts, and anxieties. She is looking at the body like a thing needed to survive and looking at the physical things that we depend upon about our bodies. In her short movie, Potential Problems, she uses scans of chewed fingernails in different layers and sizes, moving them across the screen and rendering them into something other than fingernails. She takes the digital image and is able to make it into something beautiful in a different new way. So, and then there's also our own sort of, um, uh, our inner um, identities that our bodies either influence or uh, our bodies are influenced by. And, you know, this is all psychological stuff too. Like I was really into psychoanalysis. So I did a lot of research in psychoanalysis when I was in the grad school because when you deal with the body, you kind of have to go there. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole question of the mind and body and like how um, specifically European uh, culture and civilization has split the mind and body and the body is bad and the mind is good, or there's like this binary. Um, religion has done it, of course, as well, that the body is this source of sin and grossness. And, you know, the things that we do that are gross, like pooping and stuff, are not some things that we really necessarily like to think about. And that, of course, is reflected within our culture completely. Um, so, uh, so my work, kind of brings out or focuses on these weird little physical things that our bodies do that are sort of evidence of our sort of inner um, selves. Um, so an example would be like uh, this recent body of work that I've done with fingernails. You know, I've been scanning, collecting, and scanning all of my chewed off fingernails, which is totally gross. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's a gross activity. And, and you'll see, sometimes I'll be sitting in the classroom or whatever, and I'll just look around and I'll see fingernails, like from other, from other fingernail chewers who have chewed and discarded. And there's like these little pieces of body just all over the place. So that to me is kind of fascinating. And not only the act and the sort of weird grossness of it, but that they're doing it because they're either nervous, bored, you know, it's a, it, 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 it involves some psychological need mm -hmm. or comfort, mm -hmm. you know. So this goes back to being a baby and needing some sort of uh, device to, to comfort ourselves with, whether it's sucking on a thumb or needing a binky or needing a blanket or something, you know. So to me, like that, that that's what those things all lead back to, to a certain extent. So, so I scan these fingernails and... Um, and I, and I play with them. It's not like I really want them to, to just be a scanned fingernail. You know, that's, art's not necessarily about just doing that. It's about transforming or um, bringing, you know, having an idea but bringing it to this other place. So I really play with them and working digitally really allows for that because they, they become very abstract, um, almost beautiful forms mm -hmm. um, when I look at them in a different scale or place them in a different way or, you know, animate them, make them into prints, um, it changes things. In her current project, Zooming In, Jenny uses video to compare the sleeping body of a child in diapers to that of an adult in the same position. She utilizes two channels of video playing simultaneously. One view is the zoomed in view only inches away from the baby while a scroll bar hovers over the correlating spot on the adult's body. She was inspired by online shopping and the interactive nature of viewing objects that one can't hold before purchasing. The child and the adult have a personal connection to her as well, which spurred her thinking further. I'm a mother, a fairly new mother. I have a two-year-old. And um, so I've been very involved in his upbringing. <laughs> too much, too much involved, but very involved. Um, but what has fast a little of things of course fascinate me all the time, but one of the things that just really fascinates me is that he is literally a physical copy of his father. Um, and I think about this genetics versus digital code. Um, like with working digitally, you can constantly just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, and there's not much, you know, it's it's the same thing. Of course, uh, fem uh, human reproduction is a little bit more organic than that, but, um, but the information in the DNA, you know, that DNA code sort of reappears um, as a copy in, uh, you know, in this, in my baby. Um, he, he is literally, his body is the same as my husband's. Um, sure, his face is a little bit more of a blend of us, but his body is um, um, uh, his father's. She would like to create an interactive piece with this material where the viewer can scroll over the adult body and see the corresponding place on the baby. But she says she'll need help with technology before she can do that. Beyond digital art, Jenny thinks that the next step involves a complete simulated environment. I think what's next is going to involve um, complete um, uh, simulated uh, environments. I think we, we touched on it a little bit with uh, virtual reality. I think there was a big splash about virtual reality like in the late 90s, sort of, um, maybe even the early 90s. But there is a problem with virtual reality because it, it, you had to take, you had to wear like a big thing on you. I think we're getting to a point now where we can, we can, we, we're starting to really, um, interact we, we have this sort of nice blend between an actual environment and actually a simulated environment so you take for instance like the Wii game or something like that which is great hugely successful the games themselves are actually very very simple but just the fact that you can physically you know, your physical movements are involved in the actual process or that's very exciting and, and real um, so I see uh, a lot more uh, simulated environments that that actually also use your physical environment at the same time so it's not just all simulated um, that it that it actually involves the the physical self as well so that's sort of where I see things headed um, I, I'm a futurist to a certain extent where I, I totally believe that 
that you, somewhere down the road where we'll have various electronic implants. We won't. We will no longer be carrying around devices, but they will be uh, actually physically part of our body. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.